Okay, for chapter 6, part 2, or sorry, 6.2, part 1, we're going to look at multiplying and dividing rational expressions. So, when we're multiplying and dividing rational expressions, it's basically the exact same process we use to multiply and divide fractions. If I'm doing it with fractions, if I'm multiplying, I'm going to multiply straight across the top, straight across the bottom. So, multiply the numerators, multiply the denominators. In this case, I would say that that would be the same as 12 times 5 over 10 times 4, which is going to give me 60 over 40, and then I can reduce that down to 3 over 2. If I am dividing a fraction, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal of the one after the divide sign. So I'm going to say that I have negative 3 over 5, and I'm going to multiply that by, take the reciprocal, 20 over 15. Or I have negative 60 over 75, which I can reduce down to negative 4 over 5. If I'm doing it with rational expressions, I'm going to do the same process. Multiply straight across the top, so 8 times 5 is going to give me 5a, and across the bottom, 3 times 4a to the power of 3. Well, 3 times 4 is going to be 12, and then I have a to the power of 3. And I can't simplify the 5 over 12, but the a on the top and the a to the 3 on the bottom, I can take away an a from the top and an a from the bottom and get 5 over 12a squared. And I just need to state that a cannot equal 0. Otherwise, I'm going to have a denominator of 0. For the next example, then I'm going to say that well, I have x plus 2 over 5x, and now I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal, which is going to give me 20x over 2 and x plus 2. I can multiply this to get 20x and x plus 2 on the top, and I'm going to have, not 5, sorry, 10x and x plus 2 on the bottom. We can see that it's already in its factor and down form, so I'm going to state that x, in this case, cannot equal either 0 or negative 2. And I'm going to simplify it. I can take away the x on the top and the bottom, the x plus 2 on the top and the bottom, and then I can divide the 20 by 10 and state that this is just going to simplify down to 2. With rational expressions, don't forget to state all the non-permissible values for x or whatever variable you're using. Remember that you can cancel across a multiplication sign, so going straight across on the top and the bottom. So you could take something from the top left to the bottom right, but you can't do it on any other operations. It only works with multiplications. And when dividing, we need to consider non-permissible values for every denominator that's ever going to occur. So because the expression after the divide sign is going to flip and we're going to take the reciprocal of it to multiply it, the one that was initially in the denominator can't equal zero and then the one that when it flips goes to the denominator can't equal zero as well and that's going to come up again. All right, all of these are going to be incorrect. In this case, I can't just divide the numbers on the left and the numbers on the right. I need to simplify it, and it needs to be an entire common factor. Same thing here. I can't just simplify straight down all of these. I need to simplify both these expressions and polynomials into its factored form. I can't simplify with the plus or minus. And in this case, I can't just pick and choose which parts of it I'm going to divide I would need to state that this would be the same as 12x over 3 plus 18 over 3. I need to divide the 3 from all the terms that exist. So if I'm expressing each of these products in simplest form, 
Well, because we can see on the bottom that's in the wrong order, I'm going to use the same process we did last time. I'm going to start by saying I have 4x to the 3 and 2x minus 1. And on the bottom, to flip these, I'm going to add a negative on the outside, 2x squared and 2x minus 1. From this point, I can look at the denominator and say that x cannot equal 0 or 1 over 2. And I can take the 4 divided by negative 2 is going to give me negative 2. I'm going to take away 2x's from the top and 2x's from the bottom and I'm going to take away the 2x minus 1 from the top and the bottom and I'm just going to be left with negative 2x and there's my answer. For example b I'm going to multiply straight across the top straight across the bottom and I'm going to get 175 a squared b to the 4 c to the 4 over 560 a to the 3 b to the 2 c to the 2 and d and I can simplify the 175 over 560 down to 5 over 16 I take away two a's from the top and I'm left with just one A on the bottom. I take away two A's, or two B's from the top and the bottom, and I'm left with two here, and get rid of those. Take away two C's from the top and the bottom, and I'm left with two here, and get rid of those. And this is going to simplify into B squared, C squared, and A, D. And then I just need to state, because in here they were all on the bottom, that a, b, c, and d cannot equal zero. There's my answer. For example, c, I'm going to go straight across the top, straight across the bottom, and state that I have m to the power of 3, r plus 5, and because it's squared, I actually have two of them and an r minus 1 and on the bottom I have r minus 1 r plus 5 so I know that r cannot equal positive 1 or negative 5 and I start canceling out r plus 5 r plus 5 r minus 1 r minus 1 and this is going to simplify into m to the power of 3 and r plus 5. And for this example d, I'm going to factor the top and get y plus 3, y minus 3. I'm going to factor the top here and get r and r minus 1. On the bottom I can factor out an r to get r and r squared minus 1. So it's actually going to be r, r plus 1, r minus 1. And I have the y plus 3 on the bottom. I'm going to state my non-permissible values. R cannot equal 0 or plus or minus 1 and Y cannot equal negative 3. And then I'm going to start cancelling out Y plus 3, Y plus 3, R, R, R minus 1, R minus 1. And what I'm left with is just y minus 3 over r plus 1. And there's my simplified expression.
when I get to example E, I'm going to factor the top and factor the bottom. So if I factor the first one, I'm going to get x plus 3 and x minus 4. When I factor the second one, I'm going to just keep going straight across x minus 3 and x minus 1. And on the bottom, I'm going to wind up with x plus 3, x minus 3, and x and x minus 4. I know that x cannot equal either positive or negative 3, 0, or 4. Start canceling out, plus 3, plus 3, minus 4, x minus 4, x minus 3, x minus 3, and it's going to simplify to x minus 1 over x. All right, before we start F, there's just one little error in this one. You're just going to have to change it right on your sheet, and it should say plus 12b squared at the end in order to factor it properly. So because I have this negative a squared, then that's going to give me a problem for this one. So I'm actually going to take the negative out of there right away and divide all of those by negative 1. So I'm going to start by saying, well, I'll leave the first one alone, a squared plus 2ab minus 15b squared. And I'm going to divide out a negative 1 and then flip the signs. a squared minus ab minus 12b squared. On the bottom, I'm going to pull out the common factor of 3 from here. a squared minus 11ab plus 28b squared. And I'm going to pull out the common factor of 2 from here. And I'm going to get a squared plus 8ab plus 15b squared. Then I'm going to continue factoring. And I'm going to state on the top. I have, well, I'm going to move that negative one over and say negative, and then a plus 5b, and a minus 3b for the first trinomial. And the second trinomial is going to become a minus 4b, and a plus 3b. On the bottom, the 2 and the 3 are going to give me 6, and I can factor these trinomials down, a minus 7b, and a minus 4b, and the second set is going to be a plus 5b and a plus 3b. We're ignoring the non-permissible values for right now, so we're just going to start canceling out. We have the plus 5b, a plus 5b, a minus 4b, a minus 4b, a plus 3b, a plus 3b, and my final answer is going to be negative a minus 3b over 6a minus 7b.